Hello. Good day. Can you hear me? Alright. Uh, welcome to. Hi. Yes. Welcome to the third episode of uh, my case and in sharing. So I hope today the mic sounds better. Yep, today uh, I'll be talking about the layering animation technique. So what is layering technique? So layering, um, yeah, we use, uh, we layer similar or same animation curves on top of each other to uh, create animation. So <clears throat> this technique it's useful to animate things like secondary animations, overlapping actions, and walk cycles. Uh, cycles. Yeah. Secondary actions, for example, hair and cloth, which is not animated yet in, <clears throat> in this cycle. Um, tails, hair, cloth, sacks, cycles as in run cycles, idle cycles. <clears throat> so the advantage of this layering technique is uh, it's very easy to do and it saves a lot of time. Yeah, it's something similar to the ball with tail exercises if you have done it before. So let's get into it. Right, before we continue animating Zelda, uh, let me go and open up a simple rig, a simple model that I've created. It's a very basic flag. Alright, before we do anything, uh, before we animate anything, uh, open up the graph editor. Um, you want to make sure your pace settings in the graph editor is set properly. So go to edit, paste, open up the options. So we want to make sure, ah, let me reset it. We want to make sure the paste method is set to insert uh, instead of merge. Paste method insert and check the connect button. And that's all. So, yeah, that's the first thing you have to do. So, layering animation. So, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a very easy and uh, effective and efficient way to create animations such as overlapping, cycles. So I'm just going to create a very quick uh, flag animation blowing in the wind, for example. So I'm just I just animated the uh, the root of the flag. So the rest of the parts of the flag is not animated yet. So what I can do instead of like animating one by one, pose it according to the time. Uh, what I can do is using layering method. So what I do is uh, select, uh, in this case, the rotation Y and hit Ctrl C to copy the animation curve. So I want to paste this animation into the next two uh, parts of the flag. So first of all, I need to make sure I set a key uh, and then just hit to Rotation Y. 
and go to the first frame first frame where you want to paste the animation curve select the key and just hit ctrl V so I have pasted uh, the same animation curve if you see here yeah all these three um, parts of the flag are pasted the same animation curves so of course you have to make sure I mentioned earlier the paste settings have to be insert and connect so when I play it you have uh, yeah all the parts of the flag is animated together so this saves time um, animating one by one so what you need to do now is just to offset the timing of these two joints let's say I offset it to oh yeah before we offset it make sure you um, cycle the animation curve so go to curves pre-infinity cycle as you can see the animation cycles and post infinity cycle as well so just select the two parts rotation y and offset it let's say three frames and the last join another three frames so what you get is a very natural overlapping action so what you can do next is just to scale up the rotations you can select these two rotations and just look at all three rotations at the same time yeah so they are they are all having the same animation curves so these two, I'll just scale it up slightly and the last one even more. So what this means is uh, the base of the flag is moving a little and the further away from the base, the flag is rotating more and you get something like that. It looks very natural so we can try an error just play around with the scale values the timing as well and you get a very natural things like that gg easy yeah <laughs> so this is just rotation y so we can do the same thing to rotation X and Z as well. Let's try rotation X. So using the same curve we have on rotation Y. Yeah, you can copy, do it again on rotation X. So if you notice, the rotation X has keys already. So I'll just delete all the keys away. Just one left and just hit Ctrl V, paste it, cycle it, and do the same to the rest of the flag. Rotation X looks something like that. Keep one. So, uh, same thing, I'll just offset it a few frames a few more frames and we have something like this so it looks more organic now 
of course you can still play around uh, with the values I don't want the base to move so much pretty easy magic yes all right that's the flag now let's go back to Zelda So the uh, the steps are actually very very simple. You just copy the base curve of the motion, paste it into the rest of the chains, offset it, scale and fine tune. That's all. So let's try and animate uh, Zelda's hair. So how do we animate Zelda's hair? Right now, um, Zelda has up and down motions in her run cycle already. So we just simply um, extract the translation Y information from her COG. Yep. So we just need to copy, Control C and paste it into her hair her hair has uh, a lot of control so I'll just use the middle one for now I guess Before we start anything, set the key and we shall paste into the rotate set. Okay. Make sure you're on the, the timeline on the frame that you want to paste in. Select the key, Ctrl V, and we have pasted the translation X curve into uh, her rotation Z. For the hair, make sure you cycle it. Uh, I have a male script set up for cycling, so. and then let's see the result. It's very, very subtle. So what you can do is just scale it up, and you'll see more difference. Yep. Looks odd. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Alright, so what we need to do now is just to fine tune the animation. So let me scale it back down again. So I want to offset the second, third, and fourth controls of the hair. Let's say two or three frames, and then third and third and fourth controls another two or three frames, and the last control a little bit more. So we have a little bit of overlapping. Maybe I shall hide the rest of the hair. I'm sorry, Zelda. Yep. Fine tune again, scale. Oh yeah, 
while you're scaling you can uh, hold down the shift key and middle mouse click so it won't it wouldn't scale uh, horizontally you can also do horizontally but not yeah holding shift will just lock the scale in one direction now it feels a little bit more bouncy so right now we just need to tweak fine tune the hair easiest part is to just copy and paste the curves and offsetting it and the rest is just trial and error just getting the feel of the hair correct for example yeah so done very easy not even 10 minutes So this is rotation Z, you can do the same to rotation Y as well. So for this one, maybe I'll just take her chest rotation, chest. So select the controllers that I want, go to rotation Y, control V paste, cycle and offset. need to fine-tune the hair maybe scale it down a bit This is useful and you can do it in your work or assignments. assignments. Maybe I should just scale it up ever so slightly. Perfect. I won't. I won't tweak it further. But yeah. So you can you can do it the same to the rest of the hair controls and then the clock as well. You can do the same. Yeah. So this is how you can create very quick uh, secondary motions. Hair cloth flex. And then just now I mentioned about cycles. Yeah. For example, um, her head. Wait, let me re uh, reopen this. Like for example, this run cycle. I wanna do uh, her head, her head bopping in the walk cycle. So we can do the same too. Let me just delete the keys here. Okay, maybe not. Just the rotation X. Yeah, if you if you look at my curves, 
they they are using the same theory as well, copying the and copying the COG's trans Y trans Y translation and pasted it into her head rotation X. So she has the head bobs during the walk cycle. Yep, curves are smooth. AF. You need to make sure your curves are smooth. And yeah, smooth curves are good curves. So cycles, you can also um, let me open up another scene. My idol. Oh, really? You can do idle cycles or using the same method as well. Oop, what was that? Right. You animate those bags the same way like hand what bags? Bags on the hips. Yeah, you can. So the backs are connected to the hips, right? So you just need to take the hips translation Y and place it into the hips. Yeah, sorry, into the backs trans that rotation, and you get it. Why this scene is so heavy? Let me use another scene. Right, this is an idle cycle that I created. Very subtle. Thing can be applied here as well. If you look at the COG, so I'm animating her idling, and this is some slight breathing motion. The up and down motion, I can use this, copy and paste it into the chest rotation up and down. So the same curve, I can also paste it in into the uh, shoulder, clavicle, up and down. So I just need to offset it in time to have a more natural, natural feel. Even the arms, up and down basically the same curves over and over again same, same curves so this is how I create um, very quick idle cycles and also secondary motions using layering technique And yeah, I think that's all. Any questions so far? Yep, time saver. Who are you? I don't know. I'm Batman. the ball with two uh, if 
for example you have a So you are animating a character. Oh, this um this layering technique. Um, it's not necessary. Um, use just in games. You can use you can use it in uh, when you're doing uh, feature film or tele or uh, uh, TV series as well. Hi, Paris. Yeah, I do this in Mafia. How do you translate this to longer forms of anime, like TV series? Yeah. For example, if your TV series involves a, a character jumping around, like a certain TV series that we know. For example, your character is talking, turning around, and your character has a ponytail or I don't know, hair. So we can use the same information. Uh, okay. For example, the first. Um, This is not a good setup, but yeah. So for example, at the first frame, you already have a pose for the ponytail, I guess. And how do you use this method in this kind of situation? It's the same thing, just copy the curve. C and I go to the first frame. Uh, I'll just do the first join for now. So rotation X and Z control B. So I have oops. Yeah, it's very hard to see. So let's scale it up. is coming together. We just offset it. And paste into the rest of the joints. Offset. Yeah, it's too fast.
yeah, it's a very simple way to animate secondaries. And yeah, once you're done with the secondaries, you can, I mean, you should have uh, key poses put in before uh, these, I guess. So after you paste the uh, curves in, you just need to fine tune in the graph editor. So yeah, it's possible in even in uh, long form animations, not just cycles. Box with box tail, yeah. This person sounds very annoyingly familiar. Okay. So yeah, that's all for now. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. Thanks for dropping by today. Um, yeah, hope everybody take care. The situation now in the world is pretty not good. Yeah, where do you work? I work from home. If any more questions, right. if you ever have, yeah, yeah this one. Okay, so. So that's all for today. And if you have any questions after this stream, just post it in the comments and I'll try to answer or you can just message me and we'll do something else next time. Um, if you have any suggestions, comments, feedbacks or anything you want to share, just let me know in the comments. Mm, yep. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't hit the like button and all that thing. Oh hi Bell. Yep. Take care guys. I'll see you next time. Good night.